One small step for man. One of the original moonshot research programs was just that. One giant leap for man. Putting a human being on the moon. And this week, the latest payoff in moonshot research. Well, th this one, the nuclear fusion, I would call a sunshot because, of course, what powers the sun is nuclear fusion. For decades, it's been the U.S. government that led the world in funding and focusing research moonshots. If we want those kind of breakthroughs, and I think we do, uh, uh, for all kinds of reasons, government has to be there to fund the moonshots. The private sector won't. Sometimes Canada helps with international moonshots. For example, some of the research that helped discover mRNA vaccines happened at Hamilton's McMaster University. But Canada's science policy has tended to be more risk-averse, incremental. Good evening, colleagues. But maybe no longer. What kind of funding do we need? Several weeks ago, MPs on the House of Commons Science Committee started putting together the framework for Canada's first ever moonshot research program. I thought it was great. I was very excited to hear that there was an interest for, for this kind of thing. Experts say the key to a successful moonshot program the anti -rotation is identifying the mission. Find a focus or two for Canadian research. New technologies for fighting climate change um, uh, or to deal with uh, pandemics and infectious diseases or antimicrobial resistance, which are all um, areas where there is not enough research being done. These are societal needs that we have identified as a society. Canada's innovation minister is enthusiastic about the potential. My message to everyone is I want to lead. I want us to be ambitious. I want us to seize the moment. So what are the elements? You know, funding is one. Then is the organization of research and science in Canada. And then third, I would say, how, who and in which field can we partner internationally? Now, if it happens, look for Ottawa to take its first steps towards moonshot research by the spring of next year. David Aiken, Global News, Ottawa.